guys, Paul here at Styrene Relics. I uh, I want to throw something at you guys. Uh, my buddy and I, Phil over at Horton's Hot Rod Shop, we were talking uh, last night, night before last, and uh, talking about different iconic cars that have changed our thoughts and groomed us and moved us and made us go down different avenues throughout our life. And which ones were the most, the ones that really stood out, you know? So I guess I'm, I'm going to throw out a question at you guys, and, and you can respond if you want. It, you don't have to, but I put my top five, you, this list can go on forever. So I, I took my top five cars that, that have, iconic cars that have changed my train of thought or introduced me to different areas and I'm going to give them to you and they are in no uh, no certain order at all. So number one start out with the Chaparral. Uh, just <laughs> how could you not like this car? I mean uh, it got me introduced into uh, Can-Am racing. Uh, I just uh, it, this is the one that stood, stands out, the 66 uh, Chaparral. It had the big, tall wing. I can remember as a kid having uh, one of these in the HO slot cars. Uh, just thought these were the coolest things. Uh, and like I say, it kind of got me started in the sh into uh, Can-Am. And I never got a chance to go see any of it. Uh, I never got a chance to watch any of it. I've seen some on, on YouTube and that. But, uh, man, that, that would have been it. I just think that type of racing was just super cool. Um, <clears throat> throwing this one out here, especially this picture, this is just an old trailer, open trailer, pulled by an old pickup truck. Looks like an old Chevy. Uh, <laughs> I guess. Just some average guys out having a blast. And this, the cool thing is that particular picture, you can see that old Chevy truck in it quite a bit. So they use that truck quite a bit to move this thing down the road. So, uh, yeah, Phil Hill was quite the guy as far as when it comes to uh, uh, aerodynamics and stuff and how, this, how things played out. Uh, I don't know if that... Big Wing was accepted so much because I think they made him shorten it up or something. I, I don't know the rulings. Like I say, I I didn't didn't get a chance to check out too much of that stuff because I was, you know, about four or five years old when this stuff was racing. So here it is again, that old Chevy truck. That's just uh, super neat, man. <laughs> I just I just really really enjoy looking at that stuff all the time. I mean, uh, that guy is right out in the open, you know, uh, getting the full wind right at him. So super neat, super neat. I just uh, always thought that old Chaparral, the one with the tall wing is the one that always kind of stuck out for me. Another one is uh, the El Matador. Um, how can you not like this car? Uh, it, it's... Uh, really super neat car uh it was a 40 ford started out heavily heavily custom chop section channeled all all the cool stuff that you could think of that thing come out and it just uh just super neat it's just uh, i don't know, i can't say much more than just super super cool love that car love that color everything about it i uh I just think it's so neat. Uh, Cushenberry did that. Here he is in front of the AMT building. I don't know if they were going to try and make a kit of that or not. I'm sure one of you guys might know, but with him there with that car has to be a reason. So, uh, let's see. I thought I had another cool one. Here's one here. It's just uh, just neat to see some of that old stuff. So that that's definitely a car that kind of shaped me into 
really enjoying and watching uh, custom cars as as I was growing up. This one here is is definitely one of them. So another car that, that stands out, Project X. The original Project X, I, I should say. Um, it started out as uh, popular hot rodding was going to build it as uh, regular guys putting cars together and uh, and then uh, you could follow along it was just going to be you know your average guy and then they would take you through the next phase and the next phase um, until it's death soon <laughs> and I say that because now it's an electric vehicle Oh gosh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, anyways, yeah. So it's super cool car. I mean, how could you not like that? It was in Hollywood Nights. Um, hard for me to find a picture of the originals because it has gone through so many different changes. But this is the one that I like the most. Uh, this is the one that always stood out for me. So yeah, super neat. Uh, number four for me would have been, yep, Eddie Hill. One of my all-time favorite drivers, the Double Dragon. Uh, I, okay, anybody got a, <laughs> an argument with that? That's got to be on somebody's top list besides mine. Come on. I mean, uh, look at it. Uh, twin Pontiacs, uh, four, set, four slicks back there. And he built this himself, uh, drove it himself, hauled it himself. Him and Ursi were the team, man. Uh, you just don't get any better than that. Uh, <laughs> come on. He's just peeking through there just a little bit. And, uh, man, uh, the coolness factor is at like out of 1 to 10, I would say at 15. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, this is just too cool. I, I just, I just think that was so cool. I, I always enjoyed watching Eddie Hill run. Uh, you could, you could always have a good time watching him run for sure. Man, all four tires just smoking down the track. So that that's definitely one that's uh, that's always been high on my list of of coolness. Uh, engineering, uh, the man that just wouldn't take no for an answer. So, yeah, super, super neat. Uh, there was one here I really wanted you to see. This one, I didn't even know this car was even around. Apparently so. And he's still running twin Pontiac engines. Uh, this was 1963. I don't know. That seems very awfully early, but it could have been. But yeah, pretty cool. So that that was number four. Uh, number five probably probably would be number one on my list, and that's Moonglow. Uh, man, I just love that car. That I I want to build that car one day. Uh, when my skills get pretty good, I want to try that. <laughs> I just, uh, that, that car is it. They, they don't get much better than that. That's just so nice and clean. Uh, just, and the, and the thing is, <clears throat> this Dwayne, I can't think of his last name. I don't know if I could go up and find it, but anyways, he built this, <clears throat> built, <clears throat> excuse me, this, he built this car in his driveway uh so i mean that's just that's just cool uh he bought it in uh 55 it's a 54 he bought it in 55 so it's a year old he started doing uh mild uh customs to it you know uh, shaved the door handles and and the tail lights and stuff like that and then uh most of the way through it he decided well i'm gonna go ahead and make it a Full custom, so he chopped the top on it. That's just, uh, 
Super neat. Can't make it out. Thought I could. That's that interior is nice too. That's done in uh, light blue and a white as well. And uh, they say this is about the only interior shot that they've got color wise. He's showing here where you pop the door open right in this area right here. And, uh, and then he went on to later on moving it down here where you toked touched it and, and it popped the door open. I know guys would put uh, a pull cord down there on their door so in case the battery went dead you just pulled a little cord and they always had a hidden area spot like that you could get into the car. Trunk was even done the same way uh, white and blue. So yeah so that car let me get back up full picture that's uh that's the one for me that that one there really got me really liking customs and uh and getting into uh the cars and it was just so neat because i kept thinking in the back of my mind that that guy did it in the driveway you know so I, I, that i really dig i i thought that was really cool of course now the paint i'm sure he had other guys painting it um i've read this article time and time again but i've Read so much the last couple of days, I can't remember now who it was that painted it. I should know. Uh, well, anyways, I'm not going to go through it and try to find it. But, yeah, that's it, guys. Um, yeah, here it is. Going through it. Little by little. Anyways, that's all I got. I uh, just throwing that question out there. Uh, what was your top five iconic cars that uh, changed your uh, train of thought or molded you or moved you towards uh, uh, a certain type of car vehicle? I mean, it could be anywhere from, you know, the Wiener Mobile to a Carmagia to, a, you know, Maserati to whatever, uh, four by four. Bigfoot, you know, whatever. What was the car, five top cars in your life that's uh, changed you to get into that type of stuff? So, all right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Appreciate it. We'll see you. Bye.